Hi everyone, Silver Joker here. Okay, so inflation is a real thing. And if you've bought eggs, gasoline, or produce, you know this, you're feeling it. And so what are you doing about it? Are you thinking about it? Are you preparing for it? Well, I went down and talked to my local coin store owner, Clay. He owns Main Street Coin. And he's got a few practical things he's going to share with us when it comes to uh, the subject of inflation and physical silver. He's going to talk a little bit about that. Also, he's got a little bit of advice for new stackers or maybe some of the things that you could buy, the things to start off with if you're just new to stacking silver. Also, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of an update on where I am in my progress towards my silver stacking goals for the year. We're halfway through with 2023, so I'm going to bring you guys, give you guys a little bit of a progress report on that. So uh, if you're interested in any of that, stick around. So here we are, here's uh, Clay, doing what Clay does. And Larry, how you doing Larry? Hi Don. Rocking the Ohio State uh, shirt there, polo, which oh, is I'm nice. A, I'm head to toe today. Yeah, look at you, all right. Okay, <laughs> I like that. Coach Larry. <laughs> That's nice right there. All right, so people, we are here back at uh, Main Street Coin, and looks like uh, looks like my uh, generic bin is on full, which I really like. And we got some other stuff down here that's really good. Gold, gold doing pretty good, Clay. It's hanging in there. Yeah, we don't seem to want to punch through that uh, support at 1950, 1960. Well, so you know. you know, anytime a commodity holds the line on support. Um, Generally, it's going to drift upward. That's so, good. We'll see. So we like that. Yeah. We like that. Yeah. All right. So there it is, people. What would you suggest somebody just starting out? What would be the first steps they would take? Um, you know, I encourage people to, to start buying rounds or bars. Uh, you know, you can jump into the nationally minted stuff. It's got a higher premium, obviously. Although we've seen those premiums come down a little bit lately. So... Um, things have started to even out a little bit. You know, Canadian Maple Leafs, South African Krugerrands, we're seeing those only be a dollar to a dollar fifty more than triple nine right now. Wow. So, I don't know. There's lots of options for people right now. Yeah. And there's good supply of almost everything. In of 10 ounce bars, it's a good size. Yeah. Um, it's not too huge. Yeah, these are the nice ones too. It's big these enough to kind of have a cool factor to yeah, it. Yeah, they are. Um, and there's like five these. ounce bars. And we got the five ounce bars. They're good. I mean, you're basically diversifying your labor that you've saved, your, your money. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have $50,000 yeah, in the bank, you move 10000 into gold and silver, it's a pretty good ratio. You're just protecting what you've worked hard for. Right. You know, we don't control the paper currency that we use. We don't control the value of it as citizens. Or, unfortunately, that's the domain of our, our politicians and our government. So, you know, sometimes it goes up in value, but if you look at a long-term chart, um, it's like a waterfall. Yeah, so. well, the dollar is not is not the most um, efficient way to save your money, as far as I'm concerned. That's my personal opinion. No, I would agree. And that uh, opinion is shared by a lot of people, and on which I see you got a real nice. Uh, oh yes, this is. <laughs> I mean, you, you knew I was coming. I guess. You... <laughs> no, I didn't. But this is yeah. This is how it starts, guys. Yeah, this is look a at sheet that. of thirty-two. Uh, yeah, there it is. And they will uh, and they will come like that, and they can print as many of them as they feel like. True. For as long as they feel like, and uh, that will definitely lead to inflation. True. Uh, I, I, for I lack forget, of a better way to put I that, I forget what famous economist it was. <laughs> Maybe it was Keynes or, or one of the other ones, but you know, they said inflation at its root is always a monetary phenomenon. Mm -hmm. So you know, yeah, mayonnaise may skyrocket because there's a shortage of eggs, but when we see inflation across different parts of our economy, that that's driven by currency issues. Right, it and that doesn't happen everywhere at the same time. Absolutely. It can, it can be several things. It can okay. also be the perception that there's going to be too much currency in the future. Mm. You know, so yes. expectations. Like, you know, the Fed is always worried about not just inflation numbers today, but inflation expectations. You'll hear them say inflation expectations. When we expect inflation in the future, what do we do? 
we spend our money now buying goods so we don't have to pay more in the future. Absolutely. So there's a lot of things that go into to how inflation is calculated right. and what the trajectory is, but always remember, at the base of it, it is a currency phenomenon. Absolutely. So, I would agree with that, yeah. and that's a good way currency to put that. Currency debasement is how it starts. <laughs> so you put that a lot better than I ever could, and I appreciate that. Yeah. But one way to help yourself financially during inflation, which we know is going to be a factor in the future, it's a factor now, yep. absolutely is. It may not be severe. The severity of it is questionable, but there's definitely going to be inflation. And the best way to protect yourself is to have some of this or something with intrinsic value, something that's physical that you actually have access to that can't be inflated into infinity. Definitely. And, you, yeah. you know, we just haven't seen inflation in our economy for decades, obviously. But when it begins, um, you know, six or seven percent inflation in a year isn't enough to ruin most of us, obviously, or drive our costs so high we can't afford things. But think about the drip, drip, drip effect if we move into now we're four or five years and inflation's been between four and seven percent. You know, you've, we've lost a third of the purchasing power of our savings account at that point mm. at the end of the four years, right? That's a problem. Yes. At that point. So that's what we got to pay attention to is right. the long run of it as well. Right. And especially when most families from uh, the last uh, poll that I've um, come across, it was not too long ago, or some statistic that said that 50% um, of American households are $500 emergency away from bankruptcy. A five hundred dollar emergency that's away really from back now. That's really scary. That is really scary. Sixty percent of our economy or more is consumer. Right. You know? Absolutely. That's how our economy works. If you can't afford the products, then You're the prices. That's, that's right. right. Luckily, we haven't seen unemployment skyrocket yet, or any of the big recent yes. things. But you know, to be honest, I'm just kind of waiting for the next shoe to drop as we go through the, the well, months ahead. Who knows? The biggest thing for me is to just understand that these things can happen yeah. and we don't know what the future is going to bring. So the best thing to do is just kind of prepare for kind of everything. It's an insurance you know. policy. Uh, what about constitutional silver? I talk a lot about constitutional silver. Would you say that's a good uh, starting point for somebody starting out? Or, I mean, I know it's a little complicated to calculate right. the value I, of. So uh, I, I tell clients that aren't familiar with it, you can always think of, you know, one dollar space of constitutional silver, there's going to be approximately three quarters of an ounce of silver there. That's the easiest way to kind of break it down mathematically if you're not familiar with it yet. Um, but I, you know, I always encourage people to at least own some constitutional silver. Um, you know, the prepper guys are obsessed with it. Absolutely. I'm not that obsessed with it. Um, <laughs> right. uh -huh. But let's be honest. I mean, we ran our entire monetary system on this for a very, very long time. Absolutely. If you wanted something, you spent a silver quarter or a dime or a half to get it. Right. So we've already done it before. So if we did have to revert back to some kind of bartering system, um, this is money par excellence in that situation. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, and I agree with you know, that completely. It, and it's, it's as good as any other type of silver. It's from the U.S. Mint. No one's ever going to question it. So why not have a little bag of it with your other stuff? Absolutely. It makes sense to me. It right. Has. I always advise new clients to, to mix it up, get a little bit of different things, you know. And once you own some different products, you're going to naturally learn about them. Absolutely. Um, this is such a foreign thing to people who have only kind of existed in the banking world and the traditional finance world. You know, sometimes they just need to get a good handful of it and just feel what this feels like. Oh, man, and you know it, it feels mean? fantastic. So it does. It's a different, it's it a really different does. kind of asset. It does sound everything. So one more question I want to ask you before you go. How are sales going? Is silver still as um, sought after as before? You see any difference in the uh, we, in we the see, demand? Or? We see weekly and monthly trend, uh, trends, but yeah. um, I would say that uh, the chase is still on for metals right now. Right, and I think it's probably just beginning. Right, so your your customers that have been coming here are still coming in buying That's silver as, as normal. Money. Yeah, still. a lot of people dollar cost average. They'll spend a certain amount of money every month. You know, the metals have been, it's been advantageous to us as stackers because they've kind of been cooperating with that a little bit instead of skyrocketing. Right. So that's a good thing. Um, and then you have companies that come in or, or high net worth clients that, you know, they're very concerned about the fact that they have a lot of money in the system and they, they want an insurance policy in case something bad happens. That makes, that makes a sense. That makes a lot of sense. All right, so there we are. Appreciate that, Clay. Helped me out a lot, man. And uh, Thank you, Doug. With your information, appreciate that. We bought some silver. And I'll definitely be back, and we'll get some more and get some more information from you. My fans love uh, love hearing from you. Good. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. And Larry. Hi, Don. Mr. Ohio State. <laughs> Larry, you take good care of yourself, man.
Take good care I, of yourself. I, I tried. Well, you know, counting coins and, and doing this kind of stuff has got to keep you young. It would keep me young, that's for sure. It keeps your mind stimulated. Yes, that's a good that's a good way to put that. It's the silver. It gets in your skin. No, it just keeps you young. You know, well, I heard that silver turns people blue. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't have that problem in here. I can I can plainly see. Not yet. Not yet. Give it time. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thanks a lot, fellas. I appreciate it. Yeah. All right. So there you have it. <laughs> Silver is a buffer or a hedge against future inflation because of what it is. It has intrinsic value. It can't print it to oblivion, and it's always had value. It's had value since recorded history. There's no reason to believe it won't continue to have value. And that value is going to grow. Lock in that value now by buying it now. That way you can utilize that value in the future when you need to. All right, so a quick progress report. You guys know that I want $200 face value in constitutional silver. I'm at $120 face value right now. And I want 250 ounces of generic silver. And I'm at uh, right around 175 ounces right now and i got a big bump from my good friend troy as you guys recall he needed some extra cash so he sold me 100 ounces earlier in the year and i'll show you guys that in a later video probably this month i'll bring all that silver out that i've bought so far this year we'll go through it and we'll uh we'll just do a quick update <laughs> maybe compare notes you know those of you who wanted to stack with me and uh, we can track our progress together and see where we are as far as um, reaching our goals for this year. Now we're, we're, we're halfway through the year. And so there's still a whole half a year to go and I'm real close to meeting my goals. I mean, I'm just about there with the constitutional silver, just about there with the three nines fine, but we're gonna keep on stacking. Even if we surpass that, it's better to have more than you need than not enough. That goes without saying. So anyway, I appreciate you guys stopping by. I'm going to see Phil next, as I told you guys, and we're going to buy some silver. My sister's gonna meet me there. I think she needs to add some silver to her stack. We'll see what she picks up, and we'll just have some fun and talk to Phil. I haven't been there in a while. Anyway, I appreciate you guys stopping by. I hope you got something out of this video. If it wasn't entertaining, maybe it was interesting, maybe it was informative, but I appreciate you guys stopping by and showing me the love. Anyway, we're just gonna keep this silver train rolling. Keep stacking. Peace.